First of all, I'd like to invite Edwaki Chonda and Gary Asman from uh, Airbag from Switzerland to present <coughs> um, some of the work they've been doing. So please. some more words. Um, I'm Magali Basson, working in, at Sandec, the uh, Department for Water and Sanitation in Developing Countries at Airbag. And this presentation is a presentation about a project we have been conducted since three years together with the ONEA, which is the Utility for Water and Sanitation in Burkina Faso. And we'll be presenting this presentation together with my colleague, Mr. Tetua Kichonga, also working in Burkina Faso on this, on this project. And as you see, we are two French speakers, so feel free to also ask your question in French at the end of the presentation. So today, uh, we would like to present you some of the outputs quite rapidly of the financial, concerning the vi financial viability of people search collection and transport operators in what they do. So, as you may know, Ouagadougou is the capital city of Burkina Faso, having approximately 2 million inhabitants. I would like first to present you the current Fiku Sludge Management Organization that is existing in this time in Ouagadougou. And then also I will be presenting you some of the documents we have been developing to Build an institutional framework for food sludge management. First in Ouagadougou, but that we can also implement in other cities in Burkina Faso and hopefully in other cities outside of Burkina Faso. Then present you a short study or some results of a short study we conducted to assess the collection and transport viability. So we conducted this study with four. Um, collection and transport operator. And then my colleague Mr. Chonda will take the floor and discuss some aspects concerning the capacity strengthening. He will be presenting some activities we conducted to strengthen the capacity of the operators and some perspectives concerning this one also. So what's the situation in Ouagadougou? I guess uh, it's similar to other cities, other countries. So you might have a short vision of that if you know Fiki Sludge how it is in Africa. Uh, it's characterized by a weak institutional framework. We have a framework for water and sanitation, which is not so strong, but still there is something. But concerning Fiki Sludge management, there are only a few words in some texts written out somewhere. Uh, there is a lack of regulation text concerning Fiki Sludge management. We don't know who is uh, in charge of which activity, and sometimes we have overlapping activities. There are several stakeholders involved in this in this activity, but they are not coordinated. So that's kind of a big mess, I would say. Uh, the collection and transport companies are often quite weak. They are often small, uh, many small companies and private companies. We have around 30 to 40 companies working in uh, Wagadou. And they, most of them have a weak management capacity. They also lack recognition from the population and from the states. And when it comes to dumping the figure sludge, as most of you now know, <coughs> after three years of, three days, sorry, of speaking about figure sludge, there are no official uh, discharge or treatment sites, therefore they are obliged to travel quite far away of the cities and dump in illegal areas, and therefore they have problems with the population. So acknowledging this situation, the AFD, the French Agency for Development, decided to fund a three-year collaborative uh, project, which is this project we, we have been conducted between ONEA and Sandec. And we, have, we had different objectives, but today we will be especially discussing the objective of developing the capacities and the institutional framework for a sustainable city sludge management in Waga and then in other 
cities. So we really decided to conduct these activities in participation with the local stakeholders. We didn't want to sort out with solutions that are our solution, but that cannot fit to the real context. So we conducted uh, several workshops, focus group meetings that my, my colleague will be presenting after. And the idea is really to, was really to have a participative development so that also people will hopefully implement the solution we have been building together. So the future institutional framework will be based in three on three documents. One very important document is a decree concerning the regulation of the collection and transport activities. So this one may, mainly sets the responsibilities of the operators. And these operators will be also issued a license so that they can deliver the collection and transport services in a more organized way and also that they are recognized from the authorities and also to set the responsibilities of owner and the municipality, we decided to take that together to discuss and they will be signing an agreement so that each part of the, of the framework will be engaged towards a better organization. As you see in the scheme here, the collection and transport operator play a quite central role in this whole setup. Uh, they are free to manage their businesses as they want. They can choose the customer, choose the prices. That was also a discussion. And then they will be enforced by the municipality, the, the municipal police also, and assisted by the municipality, ONEA, and NGOs and universities were also involved in the participative framework so that they can also assist them if needed. Bonaire will be also, at least for some time, in charge of the treatment, awareness, raising and reuse. Of course, to have this system working, we need to have each part of it being sustainable, being financially viable. And that's one of the big questions. As you see, the collection and transport operator has have a central place in this scheme, but now they really need to be active and, and sustainable. So we decided to conduct a short, uh, short study. We contacted more than these four companies that you, you see here, but we only could gather enough, enough information on these four. So we conducted questionnaires and interviews concerning the company structure, the financial flows, and the service price of finishing, especially with these two uh, companies. As you see, one of them is the military corps, so public institution, and three of them are private institutions, quite small uh, companies. They, they have one similar point, and otherwise everything differs. They all have another main activity. So Army, they provide other services with a, with a truck, but the, public, uh, the private companies also provide other services. And then figure such emptying is, all, is only a secondary activity. That's something important. And also it was important for the study because then it's quite hard to really assess the expenses of this, of this activity. Because for example, if you have an office that you run for two different activities, how would you sort out the prices, the costs of running this office? As you see, uh, the company had different size, different uh, number of employees, different number of trucks, and the picture you see here is maybe the best organized uh, company in Ouagadougou. It's Ikuzo, that's uh, somewhere here in the, in, the, in the room found out, uh, thanks to Hans Vetter. And uh, they are quite well organized, they really provide these uh, equipments to the, to the MTRs, and this is, they do that every time. Um, now, what's the situation then? Uh, we have seen that nearly all these uh, companies have a quite weak uh, financial management, and one of them don't even have any accounting system. They have invoices, but they don't register the costs. And they all face difficulties with high investment for trucks, which are low quality, imported from Europe, as we know, and 
most of them also lack, lack skill and spare parts for the truck repair. Here you have a short overview of, of the main cost that this company has to involve to get the, the service done. Uh, the case of the military corp is a bit different because as they don't have to run um, to pay for the office and the truck repair, proportionally the, the fuel is very high. So these are the posts that we can really optimize if we want to improve the financial viability. And also something important would be to help them maybe better fix the prices. All these companies have the same uh, similar price, mean price. They run, they deliver services for emptying at around 15,000 CFA, which is about 23 euros. And, but they do not consider the distance to the discharge site when they, when they offer this price. And indeed, as, as you have seen, the fuel is really a high expense. So they could try to better choose the destination where they go and also maybe change the price given this distance they have to go on. Another interesting point is that the influence of the pit volume depends on the system capacity. Because as the fuel is very important, they anyway need to go from the office to the household, from the household to the discharge site. And if they take, I don't know, two cubic meter or eight cubic meter, the fuel is nearly the same. So that, should, that can also be something we can optimize. We also tried to very quickly see what would be the case of a, for a typical operator having one truck of eight cubic meter, which is quite big already. Um, and this situation is quite representative for the situation in Burkina Faso. Uh, these people don't think about amortization, so they have one truck and they run it until it's dead. And, but they have a very low benefit. I have written here something like less than 10%, but indeed it's even less. So we see that they have a quite weak financial viability. And then it is really important to strengthen their capacity, and that's what we uh, tell you my, my colleague, is Mr. Chanda. Thank you. Now I continue uh, the presentation on the capacity strengthening. OK, in Ouagadougou, we have uh, three important factors. The, um, the first is uh, the collection and transport operators after we have uh, ONEA and then uh, we have uh, a municipality. Currently, ONEA already does an assistant uh, for operators. Uh, we we will have an assistance and performance by municipality to collection and transport operators for the license and the degree. And then all actors are involved in the consultation framework. We organize the focus group with uh, Collection and the collection and the transport operators to discuss and the content <coughs> and to consult on the institutional framework. The result of these activities was a good starting relationship. I did an uh, informal uh, meeting with uh, the operators for the more autonomous and dynamic association. We also organized the workshop with all the stakeholders. This workshop allowed to validate the documents for the institutional framework. And then uh, this workshop an occasion for better recognition of um, collection and transport operators as central stakeholders. <coughs> and then we organized the training for the um, 
Kiratas, we got a handbook. We did a handbook for the operators. We have four parts. The first part presents uh, overview on set sanitation. And uh, we have a safety and hygiene measure for mechanic connection and transport in the part two. We have managerial aspect as uh, official document and uh, according model. The last part is the managing management tools. You have uh, customer booklet, detailing financial uh, monitoring, and the uh, book logbook. The perspective to optimize collection and uh, transport writers. What we need now is that the professional association to take a central role in urban planning. The local authorities implement the legal framework. It could also be good if the association organized group parts, expert parts, other and mechanic repair shop. In now in conclusion, we need organized structure to represent all operators. We need to consider that the weak financial viability in the danger the um, inter-fiscal slide management chain. We need participative process with all stakeholders. And then uh, we need capacity strengthening and better consideration of uh, collection and transport operators. Excuse me for my English. Thank you very much.